In this tutorial, we're going to talk about static methods in Java. In the previous tutorial, we defined a dog class and added some code to it to help provide license numbers that were unique to each dog that was created. Here I've repeated all the dog code again for this tutorial, but I've taken out all the licensing information. We'll get back to the licensing code in a minute, but first I want to motivate our discussion of static methods by talking about variables and methods that are not static. Here in the dog class, I have an instance variable called name, so every dog gets its own name. And we have a couple of methods here, getName and setName, which are non-static methods that, that can be used to retrieve the name or to change the name of the dog. Now let's think a little bit about what's happening in memory. Here I've repeated the code for convenience, and I've drawn little boxes to show the memory for Fido and the memory for Rover. Keep in mind that in our main method here, we've defined two dogs, Fido and Rover. And here we see that the memory uh, for the name variable for Fido is completely separate for the name variable for Rover, which we would expect because each dog wants to keep its own name. But let me ask you a more interesting question. Take a look at one of these methods. Let's just focus on getName right here. Does Fido have its own copy of getName versus Rover, or do they share this method in the code? If you're like most programmers, you probably think to yourself that while the instance variables are separate for the two objects, all the code here is probably shared uh, for all the members of the class. But going forward, I'm going to ask you to make a radical change to your thinking. I want you to think about these methods, uh, along with these variables, as being unique to each object. In other words, I want you to think about it as if Fido has its own separate copy of getName versus Rover. Why does this make sense? Well, think about it for a second. If Fido has its own copy of getName, then when you use the, the variable name inside of Fido's getName, it refers to Fido. And when Rover uses its getName method, it refers to a different variable, Rover. In that way, it's much easier conceptually to understand what's going on if you consider each of the methods to belong to each of the objects, just as you do right now for the non-static variables. Thinking of it this way will help you understand better what static methods are. Now let's go back to our dog class and add some code for licensing the dogs. Except last time when we did it with a variable, this time we're going to do it with a method. OK, here we are back in our dog class. I'm going to go ahead now and add some code to re-implement the licensing information for each dog. As a reminder, we want to give each dog a unique license number when the dog is born. Okay, I've gone ahead now and added some code to the dog class for the licensing. As before, I have this uh, met, uh, a variable that's an uh, instance variable, which keeps the track of the license for each dog. And then I have this shared variable, which is uh, the license variable. And in this new method that I've created called getUniqueLicense, I increment the shared variable and return the unique license number uh, so that when the dog is born, it gets a unique number. Uh, for each separate instance of the dog that gets created. So as we suggested previously, if we look at Fido's code and we look at Rover's code, they each have their own separate instance variable for name, but going forward we want to think about it as if they each have their own separate copy of all the instance methods as well. Therefore Fido has its own getName and setName method, and Rover, conceptually at least, has its own getName and setName method. Now, question. Let's look at this other code that we've written called the getUniqueLicense method right here. And my question is, who should own that code? Should Fido own the code, or should Rover own the code, or should they share the code? Well, in order to answer that question, let's have a look inside of this method to see what kind of uh, resources are being used by the method. We see that in here, the only resource that this method uses is this license variable, which happens to be a static variable, which is clearly shared, as we discussed in our previous video. Therefore, I think it should be pretty clear that this method also does not belong to any particular dog, but should belong to the class as a whole. It makes sense, therefore, to think of this method, which is a static method, as being shared by all the dogs uh, in the dog class. If we were to do something, for example, like go inside this method 
and uh, try to create uh, a new integer, let's say, equals name like this, whose name would we refer to? Would we be referring to the name variable that belongs to Fido's code or Rova's code or perhaps some other dog? The compiler simply cannot tell. This is why when you try to access a non-static variable inside a static function, you get that common error from the compiler saying, hey, you're trying to access an instance variable, except you're doing it from a static con context, and this is a non-static variable. So for that reason, we cannot access instance variables inside a static method. The only thing we can access inside a static method are st other static variables. This is usually going to be a utility function that's declared that's declared as a static method. Anytime you have a method that is not using any instance variables of the class, it becomes a candidate to be a static method. Finally, one last word about how we access static methods inside of code. We can access static methods by using the name of the class, in this case dog, like this. Alternatively, we can also access them by using any particular dog, like that. But it is far more conf confusing to use this syntax because uh, someone not knowing that the method is static might see this and get the idea that it's an instance method. Therefore, this is the much preferred mechanism for accessing static methods inside of a class.